the entry fee is relatively high. Uh, you could finance it with a private lender, maybe yeah. 8%, probably 10, maybe 12. Yeah. Uh, so I can underwrite it with those sorts of um, entry fees, and you can, tr you can try the different scenarios and see what you want to do. Like, So if you're looking to keep this one instead of sell it off, you can find a way to do that. And I'm perfectly okay financing my assignment fee as well. Okay. Were you, you're sub two, right? Um, no, I'm not sub two. Oh, okay. I was on a Zoom with Pace last night, and uh, we just had that conversation about how we, um, I'm, I'm doing another deal in Texas where I'm going to sell or finance $20,000 of assignment fee with zero payments mm. for 36 months because there's a balloon date. So it's just, there's okay. a lot of top end profit in the deal. It's just, the entry fee is pretty high. So it's a sub yeah. two seller finance hybrid and I'm, I'm asking for 10 K assignment up front, And then the 20 K can just hit me on the back end when, when the refi yeah. comes through. Yeah. So, you know, if, if that's, that's cool. going to help the deal work for you, um, I usually want a little bit bigger assignment fee for taking it on, you know, terms like that, but that would, yeah. if that's going to make the, make or break the deal for you, then there you go. Yeah, for sure. I was thinking that, um, this would be a good candidate for um, a lease option. Okay. Or, uh, I mean, like me acquire it and then um, exit with the lease option. Yeah. Yep. And then you can get a, an asset based lender. I know a couple of people who have referrals. I don't just want to sling them yet, but um, they've got referrals for somebody who can do. Um, a refi at 90 days. So even if you enter with private money, you can exit in three to six months with a refi, a long-term refi at somewhere between four and 6%, probably low fives. Okay. And if it still cash flows, then there you go. Mm -hmm. All right. So next steps. Well, let's look at the overall timeline. The, yep. We're in negotiations with the seller. What's his timeline? So his timeline is, uh, I think it was the 22nd. He is getting married. Um, it's nothing crazy. Like he's February? Not going... Yeah, I know. That's a week. Yeah. Yeah. He's not asking to close um, in a week, is he? No, he's not. Oh. He's getting married. Okay. No, he's, he's just getting married. There's just going to be a ceremony and you're going to sign some papers sort of thing. Okay. <laughs> um, and then he would like to um, have closing, I think, by the end of March. Okay. And, so if we're going into contract gonna... pretty soon here, that's almost, that'll probably be like 40 days. We'll probably be okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah and I, I said that we might be able to do that. Um, I could. I could try my best, but I would be putting the closing date a uh, week into March. Uh, so no. March Pat. 8th. Wait, wait, wait. You said by the end of March, so that'd be April. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah okay, yeah, good. Same page. Just, <laughs> um, yeah, I would make sure that we write it up in such a way that we can automatically extend it if there's any issues, like a pending, if we're waiting on a response from someone about a lien. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I've got a, a clause in there that would be subject to 90-day title clearing stuff. Okay. Yep. Um, does he live in the property? Yes. So when's he going to clear out? Did you have that discussion? Yes, I did. He said that he would need um, 30 days to vacate. Post-closing? Post-closing. Ooh, that's risky. So here's how that works. You don't give him all his money until he moves out. Right. I've got a hold back already yeah. worked into the contract. All right, all right. good. good. Yep. Okay. All right, so we're hoping for, let's call it March 30th as a close of escrow. Working backwards from there, we want to have money in the bank or in escrow, which how much money is going to have to be in escrow at that point? Uh, what, 50? Yeah. 
Yeah, something like that. I mean, I guess the rest of it can fund the day of, or the yeah, the day before the day of. Um, but we will, now, are you going to le buy get lenders or raise capital, or do you have the cash to fund the rest of the purchase, or what? I don't have cash. I would be looking for funding. Okay. So raising capital is one of the early stage things that you got to do, whether it's direct lenders or or whatnot. So. I might be able to plug some some private lenders into the deal, but probably not for the total. What's our total purchase price here? Um, it depends on the structure, right? So if it's going to be all cash, then it's a lot more. But if it's subject to, then um, the the mortgage is 180. Okay. And I'm going to be working on um, getting his mortgage statements and whatnot. Yep. Is that um, current? Is he paying those? Yeah. Okay. And then um, all the other judgments. Oh, yeah. I'll run the new math on that. So he needs the 50K plus whatever liens that we have to actually pay at closing. Yeah. I'll have to look into to whether or not we can actually purchase a property subject to the existing, uh, the underlying, uh, uh, subject to the liens. Mm -hmm. I wonder. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to talk to an attorney about also. Yeah, exactly. Now, one of my transaction coordinators works regularly with a lawyer who either works nationwide or has somebody else in specialty states where he's not. So if you want to plug him in, we can do that. Okay. Uh, I'm generally protective of those relationships uh, in, in, in just this one way, that until you have the actual need, we don't bother the person with what ifs. So when we're when we're to the point where we're ready to go under contract and we want the contract to be reviewed to make sure it covers all our, our points and bases and whatnot, then we'll bring in the attorney and say, hey, can you make sure this is legit or redraft it? And then we want to address all these other issues as well. Okay. So we can plug that guy in, no problem. Okay, so working backwards, I think your biggest issue is negotiating the liens down and raising private capital and the private capital total is that's what we need to tally up. All right, so I've got 250. No, he's going to pay that, you said. 4600 plus 500 plus 700 plus 9700 plus 95,000 plus 43100 and I'm going to throw another 10k in miscellaneous interest on top. Yeah. So that's 163 plus his 50. And you're at yeah, 213. Yeah. So you need to raise 213. That's going to be expensive on the monthly. FYI. <laughs> cool. uh, let me see. I'm going to call it 215,000. At 10%, you're talking 1,700 bucks a month, 1,800 bucks a month, interest-only payments. Hmm. Yeah, it's not cheap. Because that's going to be a second position lien, which some people don't like. Right. Now, okay. the mortgage of 180 plus the 213. Let me do this math. 180 thousand plus 213 thousand plus another 20,000 that is still owed to him. That's $413,000. Effective purchase price, 413. Unless you negotiate the liens down. So that would be, that would be the, all of the debts is, is 413 like cash to close if we were paying cash. Uh, yes. If you wiped out all the debts, yeah, you're paying about 413. That would be an outright purchase. So you're looking at bringing 213k as raised capital to pay off all the various liens except the mortgage and the new twenty thousand dollar lien by the seller. Mm -hmm. 